Okay, this is our third lesson uh, for the inequalities unit. There are four lessons total. Um, and today we're going to write and solve one-step inequalities. All right, so in the first example, we're going to solve one-step inequalities and then graph our solution. So in these problems, what we're doing is we're just solving for the variable, um, and we do this very similar to the way that we would solve an equation. So on the first problem I have, t minus 3 is greater than negative 2. So I would add 3, do the opposite operation to both sides, and t is greater than 1. t is greater than 1. Okay, so then I'm going to now graph my solution, and if you remember Back to uh, what we've already learned, we always want our middle number to be that cutoff number that we found in our solution, 1. And then to the left, we want 1 unit less than 1 and 1 unit greater than 1 to the right. And so now we have to decide, is this going to be an open dot or a closed dot? And remember, our inequality symbol tells us what it's going to be. If there's no equal to bar underneath, I know it's going to be an open dot. And now I always read the variable as in saying, I'm saying all solutions must be greater than 1 to make this inequality true. So solutions have to be greater than 1. So greater than, my arrow is going to the right. And this is how you would graph your solution. Okay, so now let's look at this next one. All right, what do you notice about this one? Maybe how it's written. Okay, so it's kind of written backwards because my variable comes after the inequality symbol. This can be very confusing when it comes to graphing your solution. So what I suggest is you see how it's open towards the variable you're just going to take p minus 2 and you're going to write it out front, but you're still going to make sure it's open towards the p, all right? Just like it was in the original problem. And then put the 4 on the other side. Now it's just a simple process of adding 2 and p is greater than 6, okay? So now I'm ready to graph my solution. What number would go in the middle? Hopefully you're saying six because that's my cutoff number. One below and one above. Now would it be an open dot or a closed dot? All right, we should be saying open. And all solutions must be greater than six. So my line and my arrow are going to the right, greater than 6. All right, next problem. So I, I'm just going to keep um, working these uh, just the same way. On this next problem, I want you to pause the video and try to do this one before I do it. All right, so go ahead and pause it and try to work this one. It's just like the one we just worked. <clears throat> Okay, so we notice that this variable uh, comes after the inequality, so we want to rewrite it, h minus 5, but how it's closed off towards the h, we want to make sure it stays closed off towards the h, less than or equal to 2. Now, one step gets h by itself. h is less than or equal to 7. So now we're ready to graph our solution. What number goes in the middle? 7, 6, 8. Now would it be an open dot or a closed dot? All right, hopefully you're thinking closed dot because it has the equal to bar underneath the symbol. Now, all solutions must be less than 
or equal to 7, so my arrow now is going left for less than. <clears throat> All right, now in the last problem, I see something here. What do you see? It's a double negative, right? So we have to take care of that before we can solve. So that means it's w plus 4 is less than 8. And then, then you're just going to solve for w. Minus 4. Both sides. <clears throat> and w is less than 4. All right, and now I just graph it. Graph my solution. Four is in the middle. What number goes below? And what number goes above? Open dot or closed dot? Should be open with your arrow going left. All right, so that's solving just one step inequalities with addition and subtraction. Now on the next slide, we're going to go back to writing these inequalities um, and uh, we're going to write them and then we're going to solve them, okay? So the first uh, sentence says a number minus 2 is greater than negative 10. So if you remember those keywords that we learned, it might be helpful to get those notes back out just to remind you of those keywords, all right? Now greater than is pretty basic. Um, we should know that one. A number, so X or N can stand for the number, minus 2 is greater than negative 10. All right, so I'm just writing that as an inequality, and now I'm going to solve it. Opposite operations, add 2 to the other side, and N is greater than what's negative 10 plus 2 should be negative 8 n is greater than negative 8 all right next one a number plus 7 is at most 4 so at most is one of those that might be a little more tricky okay so how would we write a number plus 7 all right hopefully you're thinking n plus 7. If it's at most something, it means that it can't go over that amount. So if I say you can be at most 4 years old to play on the playground, that value must be less than or equal to whatever the cutoff value is. Alright, so now I'm just going to solve for n. Subtract 7 from both sides, and n equals negative 3. So on the writing ones, you'll be asked to write it and solve it, but you won't have to graph your solutions here, okay, on the writing uh, sentences ones. Um, okay, so let's look at the next problem. It says the difference of a number and 6 is less than 1. I want you to pause this for a minute and I want you to try to write the inequality for this and solve it. <clears throat> okay, so the difference of a number and 6 would be n minus 6 is less than 1. Okay, and now opposite operations solves for n. I'm going to cancel out. I'm going to add 6 to both sides, and n is less than 7. All right, and I'm good with that one. And now I just have one more. It says 8 is greater than or equal to the sum of a number and 3. So I have to write it in the order that I'm reading. So it starts with an 8, and then I have my symbol. It's greater than or equal to the sum of a number and 3. Okay, so do you guys remember what to do when that variable comes second? What we want to do. All right, and hopefully you're thinking, I need to rewrite this. So I'm going to take n plus 3. 
but just like it was closed off towards the end, the symbol has to stay facing the same direction. And now it's just a simple one step to get us to our answer. N is less than or equal to 5. Okay, so writing um, sentences as inequalities, and then we're going to solve. And um, you'll see uh, these modeling real life questions really come up a lot because um, they're so applicable. Um, inequalities really apply to real life very easily because oftentimes there's more than one acceptable solution to a problem that we're facing. So that's where inequalities are pretty easy to tie in. All right, so say you're walking across a bridge and keyword there, it's old. So obviously if it's old, it could have wear and tear and you don't wanna go over a weight limit, right? Because you would risk breaking the bridge and that would be terrible, okay? So if it can hold at most 1,000 pounds and let's see what's, um, what's already on the bridge. All right, it says the total weight of the people currently on the bridge is 675 pounds, and you weigh 156 pounds. So there's my scenario, okay? I know what the weight limit is. I know what my total is. Remember, the total goes on one side of my inequality. That's what I'm comparing this combination of other values to. Okay, and that helps me figure out which symbol goes in the inequality. So here's my first, what I have to do first. It says write and solve an inequality that represents how much your friend can weigh within the limits of the bridge. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how much weight is on the bridge already. So we would just do 675. plus 156 is 831. Okay, so 831 plus W. What do you think W stands for? The weight of your friend, right? Okay, and now that compares to 1,000 pounds. So what does this combination of weight need to be compared to 1,000? Does it need to be less than 1,000, greater than 1,000? If you think of it that way, it becomes a lot easier to figure out which symbol goes there. It's got to be less than, right? So what if they weigh 1,000 pounds? I mean, you're pushing it, but you should still be okay as long as you don't go over it. So that's how I know it could be equal to. And so now that I have my inequality set up, I could just simply solve the inequality like I've been doing. And W would be less than or equal to 169 pounds. Okay, that's how much your friend can weigh. All right, okay, so just writing these scenarios, all right? So what if your friend weighs 182 pounds? So same scenario, same information. Can you both walk on the bridge? What do you think? The answer is no. <laughs> because you just found that the weight of your friend has to be less than or equal to 169 pounds. So 182 puts you over and you're at risk for breaking the bridge. All right, so your explanation, my friend can weigh 169 pounds, you can abbreviate, or less. Okay, and 182 is not less than 169. All right, so again, it's just figuring out, all right, there's a lot of different weights that could, you know, still keep you under that weight limit, but it cannot go over a certain amount, and that's what we're doing with inequalities. 
All right, so we have one more example here, and um, it's, it's about a school baseball record. It says the school baseball record for no hitters innings is 112 in a season. This year's team currently has 87 no-hitter innings. What are the possible numbers of additional no-hitter innings the team can achieve? All right, here, here it is. This is a hint here. To match or break the school record in a season. So what is the total that would go on the right side of the inequality? All right, and again, this is the value that we're comparing other values to. Hopefully, you're thinking 112, okay? That's the record. Now, we currently have 87 no-hitter innings. Uh, plus, we can use N for our variable, N for no-hitter. I don't know how many, okay? And now, here's the kicker. Hopefully, you're maybe thinking um, ahead of me a little bit. Does this amount, to match or break it, does this amount need to be less than or equal to 112, greater than or equal to, or just less than or greater than? Okay, well to break a school record, it has to be more than 112, right? But then you've got this word, match it. So to match it means to tie it, which means that it could be equal to also. All right, so this is definitely going to be the most challenging part of your test is breaking down the modeling real life questions and writing your own inequality. All right, so it's important that you can pick out the parts of the problem that kind of hint or give away. This starting point is everything to have your total and then you're comparing it to a combination of other numbers. In this case, this combination of numbers needs to be greater than because I'm trying to break the school record of 112. All right, so now I just solve it. Minus 87. And 112 minus 87 is 25. So the number of no hitter innings has to be greater than or less, uh, or I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 25. And we'll say innings. So what does that mean? What happens if they have 24 no hitter innings? Did they match or break the record? No. If they have 25, right at 25 equal to, then they matched it. They tied it. And if they had, what's the next number up? 26, then they set a new record, all right? So um, it's just all about just that practicing. So today we focused on addition and subtraction for solving inequalities and writing our own inequalities. So hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of that practice, all right? And that's why I'm putting a couple extra um, modeling real life problems in here because this is where I feel like we're probably going to need the most practice. All right, and that's everything you need to know for day three.